I and Joshua Denton on the chair. And uh, just to give some background for those who have not participated before, the meeting today is designed to be informal and is uh, to be used to guide applicants through the process of obtaining a certificate of appropriateness, also known as a COA, for projects within the city's historic districts in light of the historic uh, di district design guidelines. Applicant participation in the DRC meeting is voluntary, but highly recommended. Um, any changes that the applicant chooses to make um, or suggestions taken by the applicant based on discussions with the DRC are the applicant's choice. Um, the DRC makes no representation as to whether any changes or suggestions made during the meeting will be approved by the voting body, which is the Historic Zoning Commission. So um, we have two items, or was that 28, Emily? I have two items on today's uh, agenda. Um, when your item is called, uh, please introduce yourself and generally describe your item in about two or three minutes, and then we'll get some feedback from the staff and hopefully give some feedback from the uh, committee. Do I need to say all that again? <laughs> okay, great. All right. Our first item is a discussion of site alterations at 1343 Huffins Ridge Drive, the Carruthers House. Hey, good afternoon. Anywhere. Anywhere. Kyle, is it Mr. Kramer? Yep, great. Yep. Tell us about your project. Well, I don't know how far back you want to go. I don't know how far back you want to go. Now you're on. I don't know how far back we have to go. I don't know how. Um, it's been a few years since we got our original COA. Sure. I don't know if I need to I'm, bring everybody up to speed, I think there's some familiar faces from back then. But. Um, Sure. I would just give a little recap and then okay. let us know what, what you're proposing to do different now. All right. Um, I was hired by the developer as an architect to work on the restoration of the Carruthers House in conjunction with the multifamily project up there on Huffines Ridge. In March 2020, we got our original COA to restore the house. And it's crazy. It's been four years, but it's been right. four years. And we are probably 50% through the actual restoration. So we got the COA, got uh, our building permit somewhere late 2021, okay. um, delayed the restoration of the project, probably another 18 months due to the heavy grading and civil work downslope. We didn't want to restore all that stone and then have all that you know heavy equipment kind of break it all loose again. So long story short, we're here now. The exterior and the contractor I was hoping was going to join us, but exterior is pretty much buttoned up, roof, stone, um, looks great, siding, everything. And the other project, which is different general contractors, got most of the heavy grading done. In fact, most of the erosion control and um, seating and siding is done on the slope. And so now um, the original project had a handicap accessible ramp connecting um, an accessible stall on Ezel Drive up the slope, but it had to traverse the slope back and forth because it's a, it's a pretty steep grade now. And that's that's it right there. So that's our right now uh, approved site plan shown on the screen uh, through Building and Neighborhood Services. And the contractor approached me about a, two weeks ago and said, you know, what do you think about, and I think he talked to Parks Department as well, because um, the Parks Department is going to take over this pro the, the property essentially when it's done. Um, and said, hey, you know, what do you think about doing a driveway instead off of Huffines Ridge in lieu of this um, accessible ramp meandering up the side because of the steepness and the retaining walls that would probably be involved um, to get that done. We are not the civil engineer, and we have not engaged a civil engineer yet. Um, I thought since the original, you know, going back into the, the portal and you know, looking at the COA, it's, it's kind of blacked out, dead, I guess. So... There was no way for me to revise the original one. And so I said to him, I was like, you know, first step's probably to reach out, do the DRC, and see, you know, gauge the city's temperature on creating a, um, a connection to Huffines Ridge, a driveway, so to speak. We would, if approved, or, if, you know, if everyone's good with that, we would, we're proposing to put two accessible parking stalls up near the house. And that way the driveway would go up. You could um, use that as your accessible route into the house into the maintenance shed and the trailhead structure as well. Um, now we haven't gotten into paving materials or anything like that, 
you know, keeping it loose to this level. And so that's kind of it. That's where we're at. Okay. Staff. Yes. Thank you. Um, so in preparation for this project, we, we reached out to the engineering department to get some feedback as this would involve a um, potential site plan revision or um, amendment to the site plan. And they wanted to make sure that the applicant could verify whether the added driveway access shown can be constructed with respect to the required minimum cover over the Mill Crofton Utility District 30-inch water transmission line, which has been lowered to allow for Ezel Drive connection to Hutlands Ridge Drive. Um, and they additionally verify whether an ADA accessible route from the building to the public sidewalk along Huffines Bridge could be provided or that an exception can be applied to allow for now, to allow for the now proposed accessible spaces to meet ADA requirements. In either event, additional signage may be required at the street to clarify that the proposed parking area contains only accessible parking spaces and that an accessible route from an on-street accessible space as it's shown on the revised plan um, to the building is not available. Additionally, verify as built location of the sanitary sewer pump station, which appears to be in conflict with the proposed parking area based on the approved site plan. Um, in addition to that, parking in front of per the historic design guidelines and for, per the zoning ordinances, parking in front of a building and having a driving um, a driveway in front of a building is not an approved frontage type or an allowed route for a driveway or a parking pad. If the HCC favors the new driveway and the accessible parking spots, the applicant would need to proceed to the BZA for a variance as well. So we just want to get your feedback on what you'll think of the proposed driveway and parking spots. Sure. All right. Um. Mary, do you want to start? Do you want to? Well, do we have any pictures actually of the site? I, I apologize for being light. So I think this is from uh, the side of Ezel Drive is on the left hand side. So the sidewalk would be coming sw swerving through this area to say to get to the back of the house. Okay. So to clarify, that's the ADA sidewalk that's going to do the serpentine mm -hmm. through this area that you're showing. And the, that's what's already approved, right? Yes. 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 Okay. And where where is the current parking for for this for the for the trailhead? So the current parking for the trailhead would be on a zeal drive. That's all there is. So when we got it approved, it was part of the restoration, the trailhead, and the maintenance building. So where is that in relation to the site? Ezel. I mean, where is where is the parking area in relation to the the house and the the trailhead? Directly north. I mean south. So it's not shown on here. It it is. It's probably light. I mean, I can show you on mine. It's probably a little darker, but it's, it's the street it's parking. Right? Oh, it's just street parking. Yeah, it's just parallel okay. street parking. That's it. Do we have a view from the front, Emily? Um. So this is what it shows on Google Maps, and this is a from February of 2022, and I believe that this is the Azil Drive, mm -hmm. and um, let's see within the submittal. So this is kind of like the front view of seeing the um, Azil Drive to the right and then the Carruthers house here on the left. That's just kind of in front of the house. And then the impact of the house site to what you're proposing is what? What would be the impact to the house site? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're, we're in sketch mode here, as I call it. We're still working that out because if there was really no, if, if y'all didn't want to do it, it was, you know, we haven't gotten that far with the engineering, some of the comments they talked about. So, you know, we're trying to work with the existing grade topography coming off of Huffines Ridge. Mm -hmm. And so right now, the gravel that's shown on the screen and the shots previous to that are the construction road. Mm -hmm. And so... Again, it's not, this has not been surveyed or anything like that as far as the drawing that I've prepared mm -hmm. for today. And so it might even be further down or upslope to Huffines Ridge towards the north. 
but essentially trying to use that construction road and to meander in and then you know have as small as impact as we can up at the up at the house the there was only one accessible st spot included in the original submittal we just thought while we're up there we can do two to me these things are very much in flux we i mean we only yeah. could do one i mean it might be um the city would like us to do two um the you know the paving you know what the what building in neighborhoods is, will probably make us do at, at huffines ridge for an apron um might not be the you know, they might do make you know i would assume they're going to require a concrete apron um maybe we do gravel up to the road it, you know we're trying to balance yeah. between what was there originally well you know this and this was our one ag agrarian farm site mm -hmm. uh that was owned by African Americans in the city. And I guess I would like, and I'm thrilled it's being saved, mm -hmm. thrilled. Uh, I would like to see whatever parking is done there be similar to what's been done at Harlansdale Farm, which is a softer approach. I would hope there wasn't any um, concrete apron uh, near the home so I guess that to me um, the guiding principle on achieving the parking that's needing achieved would be to look at what's been done at Harlansdale which is also was an agrarian site mm -hmm. can I Thank ask you. a clarifying question um, could this driveway be pushed closer to the tree line Further north? Mm hmm Just so it would follow maybe traditional driveway yeah. entrance. Because we ha I have found a historic photo, and this is from 1959 of the site, but this is on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. So this would be the... Um, like if so. you... Kind of like if you're viewing it from the Azeal Drive Correct. to the house. So it looks like the driveway was kind mm -hmm. of here. That's right. But I just didn't know if it could be possible to shimmy it over just a little bit. So it would so be a, it would be a, a traditional mm -hmm. um, entrance right. to the side right. instead of at the front of the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the answer is yes. Again, you know, how far we swing it in, we can easily, you know, swing it back mm -hmm. further north. But that original driveway entrance that you're looking at, that basically swept off of where Ezekiel Drive mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. um, as we all know. And I think you all have left the house with, is it, how many acres is with the house now? I don't, I, I don't have that answer. I don't know. Okay. It's all part of the hilltop overlay. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, don't know. So I have a number, but I'm afraid to say uh, yeah, it because I, mean, I it's could probably, be wrong. <laughs> probably more accurate than mine. So I'm understanding there's already a drive approved to the house mm -hmm. with one, one parking spot. Mm -hmm. And you're asking no. for two. Yes and no. There's not a drive. Right now, what's approved is what's, what's, what was on the screen, which is actually no drive to the house whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There is a, a, um, a sidewalk approach mm -hmm. up that slope, which has a series of stairs, which is not accessible. Mm -hmm. Then there's a meandering accessible route that goes to connect that one parking stall at Ezel Drive up to another sidewalk that you can access the house from. And I That's haven't it. Yeah. I haven't been out there recently, but I have heard that since all the great everything's mm -hmm. been done, it has profoundly affected the house site. Is that a fair statement. Profoundly in a, just, just in general. And that it's like, kind different. of on a null. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely, it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that south shot that Emily showed, if you, the, from Ezel to the house, you know, the house is. See, but at the yeah. beginning of the day, I don't think any of us really understood that part of it. Right. So. The taper from left to right in the photo mm -hmm. was a lot greater as it were before mm -hmm. the multifamily right line. yes yeah i was a little surprised the first time i yeah. went out and saw I'll, some of the that's what i've heard several was basically up in the air I'm several i haven't been there yeah. in a that's mm. where the grade's gonna go 
a year. <laughs> so. So you would propose that those two parking spaces be handicap accessible only? They'd be accessible spots, yes. I mean, they so no Strike one else marked. could park there. No one else could drive up and park in that location and block access. Correct. I mean, now, is that, that what, what you're... Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a point of discussion. We don't, by, by code, we can do one. We, 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 we physically could only, we only have, if we only want to do one, if it's less intrusive to the area, we can, you know, just do one. Um, we were, the, the original idea was simply to move it, move the accessible spot from Ezel Drive up to the house so we could eliminate the long ramp. And so we can't get from point A to point B without traversing that slope. So one way would be like, well, if we move point up A closer to point B, then we have a different connection point. And then during our discussion internally with the developer, I said, well, why don't we do two? And again, just for you know, keeping it loose, I guess, so to speak. By code, we only have to do one. I'd but say, we have to have the aisle. I'd say for me, it's kind of conflicting. Uh, mm -hmm. I understand the purpose and the need, but it does go against what our guidelines say about putting parking in front of historic mm -hmm. structure. And I know others have come to us asking for parking in front of historic structures before, and we've denied that. So it it, it is conflicting because I, I tend to would rather side on the, the side of the guidelines. In this case, because the historic property and its location. Um, but that's those are just comments that mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. I, I look at this building and uh, to be honest, I wasn't familiar with it until maybe a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I, you can see it from the interstate, certainly. Mm -hmm. And I thought there's a little old house over there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the changes on that kind of downhill side really have impacted it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, personally, I would much rather people experience it in the way that the house sit on the land before, which is really where you're talking about. Um, if people could approach it from that direction. So I don't necessarily have a problem with coming off of, what is it, Huffines? Huffines Ridge. Huffines Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it swings in front of the house too far. I'm wondering if it, if um, those accessible spaces flip-flop to the other side of that sidewalk and you come in the back side of it so that the parking, the motor court, the drive are not directly in front of the house. Mm -hmm. but it really is a side approach mm -hmm. then people coming to the house driving up or walking up that street uh, because that ramp won't be there anymore correct right uh, correct to have the stairs still have the stairs uh, and the sidewalk yeah they'll they'll experience the house in, in a format with a site kind of interpretation of how it was a bit more instead of everybody having to hike up this manufactured mound to get up there um, so I, I like that in that regard but i think the swing of the driveway has to be pushed north, and if you can send the parking spaces on the other side of that, you know, kind of crucifix sidewalk. So you're saying mirror that, not yeah, not, mirror not it. rotate it, mirror. Yeah, mirror it to the other side to and the then come side. in the back side of it. Mm -hmm. It takes all that parking, you know, that's probably 20 feet on the uh, away from the corner of the house, and it's not out in front. Mm -hmm. and, and in that regard, I think it's a better site interpretation. I think functionally it works better. And I, I mean, from a maintenance perspective, this isn't the last time a pickup truck is going to have to approach this house in the next hundred years. So how is that going to happen with the little ramp? And I, I think this helps some of those things too, because mm -hmm. if there was no vehicular access to this mound without driving through the the, the field, uh, I just don't think that's that sustainable in, in my. I mean, I'm not the maintenance department, but I'm just thinking out loud. Well, that's my thought. To that point, um, our team did talk to Kevin Lindsay at Parks, and he would prefer something like this, so to speak, so they can access the maintenance building um, sure. equipment. Um, I mean, it's lawn equipment, and it'll be used, you know, it's going to come out of that and be used on the lawn. But and to, yeah, if and, something and ever to, and to that end, I mean, if, if the parking Does stalls help. ended up, behind the building or actually next to it back there even better mm -hmm. uh, but you kind of have to cross the path the trail at that point and maybe that's good maybe it's bad but the the 
the less that in front of the house, the mm -hmm. way people experience the house, the less that that's impacted by a motor court, parking spots, and a driveway, the better in, in yeah. my mind. And I'd like to hear more, more on that. So what we're seeing, we see the drive that's coming off Huffines Ridge. And then we see, I, I guess on this, I'm seeing the two handicapped parking spots. Yes. And that's in that in that front section. So are, mm -hmm. you, are you suggesting they move it closer to the trail shelter? Yeah, I think it would, this, you've got this almost, we'll call it the horizontal. Yeah, it's kind of. Um, drive, yeah, it flips across like he's drawn. So it kind of mirrors across that mm -hmm. and you'd approach it from the top side. So the driveway would never swing in front, the motor court, the parking spaces would be on the other side of the sidewalk. So you've kind of be in between what we're showing now and the trailhead show. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and and like mm -hmm. I said, if if those spots moved north of the house, like directly north, so if you're looking at four quadrants, mm -hmm. if it went in the upper right hand quadrant, is even better in my mind. We but have it some may not may not I, I get it may not jive and you're just adding length. And well, there's and some historic, we, I mean, as Mary knows, we've, there's some stone walls we preserved and rebuilt mm -hmm. on the site and they're, they're right yeah. in. Those, okay. Yeah. So that'd be a reason so. why you might stop it short yeah. of that. Yeah. And, and as I said, and I don't know what leeway there is, but they manage somehow at Harlansdale materials are going to matter mm -hmm. a lot in how this reads. Yeah. 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 They have a gravel, don't they have some mm -hmm. gravel mm -hmm. and then where you actually they, I think park they has a hard mash thing. it into asphalt, right? Is they have, they, they have, just, they have, um, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Yeah. And we so could that, do gravel, it's just that typically the city. That would be, but for somebody handicapped, right. they're. At the stalls you cannot and yeah, typically there the city needs will to be have a, something a, solid. Like but, an apron to keep it off the street. Right. Then you can transition to the, mm -hmm. yeah. But even not requiring big, I'm talking to the city more now, not requiring a lot of curbing right. really matters. From a historic perspective, yeah. At, at uh, where we did that was at Breezeway, mm -hmm. was just, you know, softened it down mm -hmm. some. Right. No, I mean, you read off the litany of, of things that um, the site plan review would obviously have to approve. Mm -hmm. And so our civil engineer is going to have some decent lifting on mm -hmm. this. If, if, but we wanted to keep the discussion at this point. Yeah, the, de right. the details are not, we haven't gotten into any of that now. There, because the, it's a pretty comprehensive civil plan for but the overall But Anything site. like, I think, that we can do to get it <laughs> behind out, yeah, the out house. Yeah, in front of the house. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, I concur with all that. I think that I think it's concerning from my perspective to see it all just kind of land right in the, right in front of the front of it. Um, Kelly, you looked like you may have had a comment earlier, but you may not. Okay. Okay. Very well, good. Not about that, but I do have one question: um, Is the trail where that shelter is leading to a walking path or a bike path? Bike. A bike. So how would bikers get their bikes up there without the curved ADA accessible path? How do you envision them accessing that from the parking area along Azell? Yeah, I mean, they'd have to either come up the grass, come up over the grade or get up, or if we have to connect another sidewalk, that's not necessarily truly accessible if i say it that way and i think one of the comments from staff it sounded like was a sidewalk connecting huffines to this if it goes is that did i hear that right is that one of the requests i thought that was one of the first kind of bullet points connecting like a the public sidewalk along huffines because that would be a conduit to get there i guess yeah to uh they would need to verify whether the added driveway access shown can be constructed um, and whether an ADA accessible route from the building to the public sidewalk yeah. along Huffines Dreads could be provided. So that would mean the, the pavement material would need to be not gravel. Well, well it sounds I like don't understand. In to the driveway, Are you saying like for it. bicycles it has to be, it, somebody on a bicycle has to have accessible 
because I would wonder why they couldn't have a bike rack <laughs> if you're riding a bike. I mean, just uh, saying. I was I, asking about the parking because it's uh, on Azel. Right. Mm -hmm. How bikers would approach the trailhead for the bike. Okay. The bike trail. Since gotcha. It's gonna the bike be trail. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Stairs. Okay. Well, right. I think, I think the assumption is that. Yeah, like he's saying, if they can connect, and I think you're showing sidewalk in this sketch anyways. Well, there's a sidewalk that's part of the overall development going up Huffines Ridge. Yeah, so if and you can so go from... If we connected another sidewalk from the house to that public sidewalk, and it sounds like they want that to be accessible, then that would be a route for bikes to take from Ezel up up huh. and back. Yeah, I think staff just wanted to make sure that a public, an ADA accessible route is possible from the public sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just from the, Not the, just from the, the stalls, parking, the yes. parking stalls, yeah. Okay. I think what you were saying is, is somebody on a bike's getting ready to get on a trail, but they can't go up the driveway in their bike. That's mm -hmm. not really the issue. The issue is somebody yeah. that's just maybe wheelchair bound and has right. come right. on the sidewalk system. Right. How do Correct. they get to the house? Yeah, right. that's what I yeah. Was, yeah. thought we were. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like there are some details to be worked out, so... Uh, <laughs> Oh, and I sure. think our message is just impact. This poor historic resource has been impacted within inches of its life. Yeah. So just anything. Be delicate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any other? Brian, I see you're. No, I'm just thinking that, that the solution that you had to begin with mm -hmm. may be the, the best one. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not, it's Sometimes not Thank you. And we appreciate you coming. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we just want to keep an open dialogue, like I said, mm -hmm. as this thing evolves and as they're getting down into it. Um, and I want to clarify, the concerns. solution I meant was not what we're shown, but what was originally approved. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. The, the, the sidewalk that's on the books right now. So that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and sort of off topic, uh, I do believe that this site would be eligible for histor historic interpretive markers from the uh, Civil War Heritage Area Program. So. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank Thanks you. so much. All right. Our second and last item on today's agenda is a discussion of new construction at 120 Aldersgate Way. Amy, I'm going to mess your name up. Is it Tavalin? No, you got it. Boom. There we go. Great. The applicant. <laughs> Franklin Farmers Market. How many have been? Raise your hand. I've been. <laughs> Welcome, oh, Amy. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us. This is Jeff, who is with Morton Builders, and he, his company will be the ones constructing this. So, um, as you know, the Franklin Farmers Market is a huge part of the Franklin community, and the factory is um, getting rid of our lease at the end of 2024. So we are, we found a new home at the Franklin First United Methodist Church. And we are building a new construction there to house all of our farmers <clears throat> market vendors. Over to you, Jeff. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it looks like you've got our drawings that we've submitted. So, um, yeah, this was kind of our next step in the venture here to make sure that we can look to do this is to meet with y'all. So we appreciate the opportunity to do so and um, um, open the questions to to you. Um, uh, you know, as you see, we're trying to keep in mind the architecture of the existing church there with the architecture that facade that we're showing in our proposals and our renderings and elevation drawings um, using same brick and there's panels on the church as well that you're seeing on the end of the gables there of the uh, pavilion structure which I guess is looking being looked at as an accessory structure so we're trying to keep in mind all the architectural facade uh, and look to as well with that so Great. Ms. Helfer. Yes. So this proposed structure is proposed to be 20,160 square feet. The design guidelines recommend to locate accessory structures behind the rear plane of the principal building. As it is proposed, it is going to be to the left. So if you orient yourself, like kind of if you can see where my mouse is, this is going to be like Franklin Road. And at the top of this, this is going to be Matt Catcher. Mm -hmm. So it is proposed to be on the side. 
So the design guidelines also recommend to locate new accessory structures to be secondary in prominence to the historic principal buildings on the site or in the district. New accessory structures should not block the view of the principal buildings from public view, set, view sheds. The zoning ordinance does require accessory structures to be located behind the principal building, and so that would mean it would need to be away from Mac Hatcher. There is floodplain behind the building, and so part of the their process is that they will be requesting a variance for it to be located to the side of this uh, the main church building. While there is merit to the side placement, the proposal shows the accessory structure footprint closer to the street of Mac Hatcher than the principal building, and staff recommends that it be shifted back slightly so it is set back at least the same distance as the church, if not more, to help meet the intent of the ordinance so the accessory structure is perceived as subordinate to the main structure. Additionally, the design guidelines recommend to design accessory structures with simple forms that are reflective of the principal building. And I have just some screenshots of um, the church showing it's the archways. There's a photo of it at night. And here's an alternate image. Mm -hmm. And so it took inspiration from what is seen. Um, the proposed materials of the proposed accessory structure are standing seam metal roofing and brick. Both of these are appropriate within the design guidelines and what is seen at, against the existing uh, principal building. And we would like the DRC's feedback on the cupola and on the brick bases of the canopy. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. All right. Tyler, you want to kick us off this time? I, I agree with staff on, on kind of setting this back a little bit uh, so it lines up at least with the, the face. I, I don't really have a strong feeling for which side we want to call the, the back of this thing. Um, this has always felt like it anchors that corner, and I know there's land and we've seen proposals for land between um, but um, you know as, as Mac Hatcher goes there's especially through that corridor there's not a whole lot sacred happening beyond this uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, kind of setbacks and massing and you know what one of the things I feel about this building is it's of a scale and size and use that I know it's accessory but it's going to feel like its own building on its own kind of lot, even though it's not. Um, so I just don't feel the same about shoving it behind the church necessarily. I think it's it's fine enough to stand where they've shown it with that slight adjustment. Um, in terms of the materials and such, um, I like the nod to the church. I think that's, if, if you all like that, I like it too. Uh, the brick bases. Uh, again, I'm sort of indifferent to that. We've we've erred on the side of kind of simplicity. Uh, on on you know we've approved some things on the factory recently, like a canopy, and we wanted it as clean and crisp and simple as possible. But we were also kind of protecting some, you know, historic fabric and artifact there. Uh, here, that's not the case. There's no there's no context of historic nature. Anywhere well, the Matt here. Mahan house is right. south, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's. I just don't know that you're going to see it the same as like the factory in trying to simplify things to let the factory be the show. This is its own thing. So, um, again, if you if you like those and it and it helps from a you know sustainability standpoint, people running into things and so carts or whatever. Church wanted more brick, so yeah. it just looked like a barn out there. So mm -hmm. sure. That's why all the brick that matches the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the cupola, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to think about it. It, it seems a little uh, forced on this thing because we know it's kind of not necessarily a required element. 
uh, but uh, a lot of those agrarian kind of forms that are these crucifix forms too have these kind of long boxed up bays but it's like a whole extra expense and they vent and all that so um, you know I just say maybe as simple as you can make it is, is what I think is probably appropriate for kind of our gateway into our historic district if that really is kind of the the start where we where we enter into downtown so Brian. so I want to start out by saying I, I'm it's a pleasant that the farmers market has found a home yes that is very good <laughs> and you're near the Methodist Church's giving garden mm -hmm. yes and that's part of it too we've had a relationship mm -hmm. with them since we started the market and they mm -hmm. come to our market and pick up excess for their garden on the go Mm -hmm. So, and we explored going over where the Giving Garden is currently, but they, the church just wanted us to be at this site. Mm -hmm. And as far as size goes, in my understanding, and I've just heard this, that in the future, the, the church intends to build a main sanctuary, probably on that vacant lot. So this, this site's going to get even more massive, so that this yeah, would seem more, even more subordinate. Mm -hmm. the, when the Wyatts, when the Wyatts rented this property for, had their racetrack and then they had uh, trotters, they they had a, a horse stable out there, oh, and I'm it? and I well uh -huh. I don't know in that exact location but somewhere around there and it may have had a cupola. I'm just trying to to remember if that was true or not. Well, there are pictures of it. Uh, I will I'll I'll send what I have to Emily and that way she can send mm -hmm. it to you. But those are some things, and as, as far as the, the architectural style, I mean, I think it's fine. The, it really can't, is not going to be prominently seen from Franklin Road, probably more the Mac Hatcher side, yes. but I would be mm -hmm. more concerned about the Franklin Road side. And I, I doubt anybody would even see it. So, you know, I think those are the main comments that I had. Thank you. Mary? <laughs> Mary, what say yeah. you? Well, I, you know, I'm thrilled that the farmer's market has a home. And I actually think this can end up being a multi-use facility where that's it is. We, that's the way we're building it. So that their youth kids, mm -hmm. we're going to have a basketball court painted. Yeah. So it's, and, um, it's kind of exciting. Um, I would probably error on the side of simplistic and I keep seeing in my head um, a weather vane that maybe had a nod to the farmer's market at some kind of custom weather vane if the cupola wasn't there um, I see cupola stuck on a lot of buildings so um, but generally yay I, I'm always a fan of the brick being lower so it doesn't look like the posts are standing on their tippy toes, but that, yeah. that'd be my only thing. Okay. okay. Um, Kathy, I know you just got here. Do you want me to go? <laughs> okay, great. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, it's exciting uh, for the farmer's market and mm -hmm. for the community for sure. So this is a great uh, win for that, I think. I had the same question Brian had about what I've always heard is that the main sanctuary is gonna be built on that other, on the other side of this. And so from a setback perspective, if this is leaning forward, and I know that's a long time, that's in a master plan, maybe it's not that far off, I don't know. But I do think it's wise to be cognizant of that. I don't think there's any way you're going to see any of this from Franklin Road. It's just too far over. And I mean, I think it's a matter of seeing it from the Mac Hatcher. But it, I don't know. I do think it'd be it'll be pretty visible from there. The one thing that's jumped out to me um, is it's kind of a mashup of church and agrarian is what <laughs> I feel like the arches and then the cupola. It almost feels like to me it would from from the historic zoning standpoint almost needs to pick a lane is what. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like because I think if it if it the desire is for it to have those nods of the church, I think that's OK. But in my mind, from the site and from for the resource, I was thinking more this 
seems like, especially given its purpose for the farmer's market, it feel, should feel more agrarian. And so that's where I just, when I look at it, I feel a little conflict with the arches and the cupola. It all just feels like it's a little, uh, I'm having a hard time squaring all that, but yeah. I'm not the architect. So there you go. Just trying to make the church happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And I mean, the, yeah. well, the cupola, I mean, the, the one thing is that's a really long span. And I do <laughs> think that cupola, it's gonna look silly. well, I don't know if it may help break it up. I don't know. I'm not, again, I'm not the architect, yeah, but that's the, a long run for the, sure. Sorry. Cupolas, a lot of problems with cupolas is, is when they're built agrarian a hundred years ago, it was a lot of thin members that weren't very tall. And it's just like, you build a new house with dormers today and all the structure is so much bigger now right. that the scale gets thrown off. There's lots mm -hmm. of space around the windows because the walls are really thick and all this. Cupolas have that same, suffer from the same uh, afflictions. And so they, because of modern codes, everything's beefed up and all of a sudden you got all this wall and not a lot of window and it's, they can, so if you can get the scale right, um, they can look really good. And so I'm not saying don't do one. I think it could be really charming if it's pulled off nicely, but they, they tend to get bloated because of all the modern codes. So, and you know, it's, you, you, you've been there, I'm sure. <laughs> so that's what I had now. Kathy, would you like to weigh in? <clears throat> I've been squinting. And when I squint, I'm trying to visualize mass and form and shape. And um, what seems to stick differently with me is where this one gable goes in and it's a certain pitch. And then the wider one with the church arch is very wide and flat. And so I'm seeing a little conflict where it makes the cross intersection. It almost reminds me of like church cathedral designs. Um, there's something about that's out of balance with those two. Um, and then that relationship with the cupola, the cupola just seems like it dropped out of space. Um, and so I'm almost thinking, does it become a smaller cupola and relate to each of these wider hips or gables that go in off the other side or does it match smaller but a pair over in relationship more to that gable as opposed the skinnier gable as opposed to just one plop down in the middle is like the axis of it all so there's something that's off to me about that symmetry and that balance between the two cross structure forms I think the main purpose of the showing the cupola was to just show that we can do it it's not necessarily 100 percent that we're proposing it but you know a topic of discussion so as we're talking about it it yeah. certainly can be changed in dimension yeah. or if we added a couple more you know yeah, what would three look like would that maybe that would look better too right. i don't know um, my opinion is if you know more may not be the answer scales yeah. which you need to think about and then tie the relationship of it to the structure that it's featuring that's why I was thinking a pair on the short gables as opposed to the long ones or vice versa. But just, and then imagining it without a cupola at all. So, you know, again, what does the story it tell? Well, Mr. Chair, now I'm looking. What you found? I used to sell stuff, at, so I kind of remembered it, at the Charleston Market. Mm -hmm. It actually has arches. Okay. So, oh, I've um, been to that market. But, it's beautiful. But yeah. the, what it has that makes it sort of splendid is there's more weight on the end. There's mm -hmm. brick that comes up um, on the, the, the main end, which would be the one facing... Mm -hmm. Mac Hatcher, but there there is uh, at least at the Charleston Market a precedent for so the whole section is bricked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's maybe I could save money by getting. Rid I, of I don't think we. I I think honestly this is too grand. Honestly, 
Um, but I think a lesson from giving it a little extra love on the Mac Hatcher side okay. could be helpful. Because that is what you're, you're going to see. Kathy. Um, you're showing brick as a fenestration, right? As I'm a, not sure. Brick as a fenestration. I'm not sure if I'm reading like detail on it, but there could be a play with adjusting brick design detail, mm -hmm. shoulder, soldiering, sailoring, all those different types of courses that you can create more interest. And again, that would change the mass of it a little bit. Kind of maybe that attention to detail would give it a little more character and not such a big mm -hmm. bulkiness. All right. Anything else? Commissioners? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything, any other questions for us? So we take these comments and then we mm -hmm. just go back and do a redesign and then we submit them. I guess you yeah. can tell me this later. <laughs> yes, we'll include this in your DRC recap, but you can choose to come to another DRC if you'd like, or okay. you can just go ahead and submit to the Historic Zoning Commission. That's okay. right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank in, you all for In coming. your opinion, would we be safe to go ahead and file in the Historic Zoning, or do you think we need another one of these? I just don't want to go down the wrong road. I think when yeah. Emily sees it, she can probably... Give you a pretty good sense. A yeah. pretty good sense. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think we're saying scoot it back some mm -hmm. and then amend some details. I don't think we're saying redesign it. Mm -hmm. I think oh, yeah. that's Is right. Is that fair? No. I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. fair. That's and we're not I've all here. And we, about. you know, I mean, and part of it's going to be when we actually see what's presented, you know. Okay. Something brand new may jump out to somebody that causes us to... Need okay. it to take another lap, but I, I mean, I think that I think Mary's point is right. I think if you work with staff, they're they have a pretty good okay. insight. So thank you guys. Great. Thank, thank you. you. I'm so happy. Yes, it's mm -hmm. great. Great news. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Absolutely. All right. Anything further before we adjourn? At four forty nine. At four forty nine. I know. Unbelievable. All right. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I don't think. Did you have something, Mary? It, I have noticed that there's been a building bill that I don't think we ever reviewed. And what is the, pro I'm not going to say, what's the process for saying that? Um, they'll have to come in. No, I meant do, do we report it to codes? Do we report it to you? How does, it to, yeah. to you? Okay. They can investigate it. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Absent anything else? I don't think we need a motion on this one. So we are adjourned. Thank you.